Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this channel and today's video we're going to customize a custom controller for a Nintendo uh, Cube and it's going to be a design pink in the front and a red in the back and it's going to have the Kirby uh, character on it so that's going to be kind of fun. So follow me and let's go ahead and get started. All right, and here is the original controller. It's obviously used and has been weathered a little bit. You can tell by the clear uh, background, it's been uh, yellowed a little bit. So all we gotta do is sand it and give it a new fresh coat of paint and it will look better than the original one. So obviously we partner up with custom controllers once again, and this particular controller is going to uh, the creators of a world star so if you've ever been on Instagram you've known uh, or do know who world star is and you probably follow them so this is going directly to them and uh, we're hoping we do a good job uh, so they can come back and order some more controllers so this controller has been disassembled already I just have to separate each part individually and we are painting the tip of um, the uh, the cable so I want to cover the electronics as, as much as I can so I'm putting them in the bag and taping the rest Using my uh, trusty sander, I'm just going around and sanding the entire controller uh, as much as I can. And uh, this way I don't have any, um, you know, leftover gloss areas and try to knock down as much of the scratches as I can. This way it looks nice and clean uh, when the uh, final coating of paint goes on there. All right, everything is sanded. Let's go ahead and clean off all the uh, the grease and stuff. So I'm using just regular rubbing alcohol and a clean towel and just wiping as much as I can. Obviously the dust will be held by the microfiber and then all the uh, grease and stuff will be removed by the alcohol. So um, obviously I'm using my hand and uh, in some areas. So I'm trying to do a kind of like a rough, good clean first and then um, I'm going to come back with gloves and give it a final wipe down. All right, so like any other plastic uh, project, I'm going to lay down a layer of Audubon sealer. This way everything sticks on there and nothing comes off. As I lay down color, I am applying a little bit of Audubon sealer in that color 
this way it gives it a little bit stronger bond and it'll last a, a longer time and it'll also make it easier if I do use stencils this way it doesn't peel off so I'm making the acrylic stronger by applying maybe like two or three drops of Audubon sealer. In order for me to have nice bright colors, I always have to spray a white base. Uh, this way I can hide the original color of the controller and it doesn't screw up or mess up my future colors. Otherwise, you know, if the controller is kind of old and faded, uh, you might be able to see that come through in your uh, additional layers. So I always spray a white base uh, to begin with. So I always start with the lighter colors first and then add uh, darker colors on top of it. So I always study the, um, the mock-up and I can see that the overall color is pink but there's a little bit of a darker pink that gets sprayed towards the bottom of the controller which I'll do second. All right, let's spray the red and I'm using the red straight out of the bottle, but I'm going to add a little bit of Audubon sealer so it's nice and strong.
all right and the controller is taking shape so now we have to jump on the computer and start designing our graphics and creating those stencils in vinyl. My preference in working in vector files is Illustrator, but there is other softwares kind of like Corel or uh, I think uh, Cricut uh, Design Space, I believe, uh, that you can make different uh, designs. And so um, in this case, what I'm doing is just recreating the character and then I'm going to be um, creating a stencil out of this particular design. Another way of doing this without the computer would be to lay down a uh, layer of masking tape on your actual controller and then printing out on a regular piece of paper uh, the character that you want, gluing that piece of paper onto the masking tape and essentially cutting out each individual section as you paint and as you go along. So that's another way of doing it. Obviously it will take you a little bit longer time um, and it won't be as accurate, but uh, it will help you um, essentially get down a stencil on your controller. Obviously the next step is to get all your stencils on your controller. So let's go ahead and do that and then tape all the negative space that we want to protect and get ready for paint.
I am using similar colors on the front and the back of the controller so I want to spray them together so I went ahead and laid down all my stencils and tape both the front and the back and obviously the uh, the tip of the cable so I want to spray everything together at once Everything is sprayed, so let's go ahead and unwrap this before it eventually cures. And uh, this way we can have a nice clean edge uh, for every single character and star that we have on there. So because we're doing a production type of work here because these are going to be sold the uh, client expects good quality work so this is the reason why i use a stencil and try to get the character as perfect as possible but obviously with the uh, stencils they're not really going to come out uh, perfect because you're, you're always going to have overspray so um, you know just use the stencil as a guide and always remember that eventually you will have to come back with a brush and clean up um, the uh, you know the stencil has overspray and stuff like that
so by adding a little bit of a drop shadow um, and a highlight to the character it uh, not only allows me to make it look better but it also helps me hide the overspray of the black so um, you know always keep that in mind you always kind of think ahead and try to um, remember that you will have overspray and try to figure out the solution before you even have the problem And we're close to the finish line all we have to do is add the little um, paint paint splatters on the right side of the controller and I'm gonna um, I kind of already drew the design on a piece of paper uh, from the mock-up that I received so I'm just translating that onto the controller itself allowing that to dry and then coming back and adding additional layers so it's nice and solid And we're finally done guys let me know what you guys think of this controller in the comments below obviously we still have to add the gloss and uh, so let's go ahead and do that and take a look at the final result All right, and there you guys have it. Hopefully you guys enjoy the process of me creating this particular controller. Let me know what you guys think of the design of the overall process, or let me know if you guys want to see something else uh, totally different. So hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video and don't forget to subscribe. If you have anything that you want to customize, let me know on Instagram at Ernie Designer. And uh, of course, if you want any custom controller created, don't forget to hit up custom controllers and they provide a lot of cool designs. They can customize just about anything and um, partner with them and uh, I'm part of the, uh, the lineup of artists that uh, create some of these controllers. So I'll see you guys in the next one and take it easy for now. Bye-bye.